Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you my new interior light upgrade for my coupe. Done on the original roof skin. Very daunting task to tip uh, an edge, not just 90, but a complete 180 around the entire perimeter of the original roof skin. No welding. Uh, new learning curve for me, really. I've never done anything like that before and pretty risky to do it in my own personal car. The one I care about the most, but it's done and I'm pretty over the moon with it. Looks great. That's not the only party trick for this car. There'll be another thing I might show later in the year that makes this look very tame in comparison, but I don't want to let all the tricks out of the bag in one episode. Now I was very fussy on the sunroof that I actually picked. I seen a sunroof in my mate's 240k and I was like, you know what, that's actually nice. And it changed my mind on sunroofs in a 70s car. It has to be a period correct 1970s sunroof, which is what I sourced and then went about installing it. It's not just your average cut a sunroof out of some other car and weld the lip in trick and then it looks too modern for the car. I actually went with something that was very suited to the car and the age and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Seems to be a running tradition that I put a sunroof in every bloody car I have and if it doesn't already have one sunroof it ends up with two sunroofs and if the Hilux can only fit one sunroof it ends up with electric back window and other stupid mods so I think it was probably only a matter of time that this copped one I've just never pictured the car to ever have one in my whole life and I've had this thing for a long time since I was 17 so pretty surprising that it uh, worked out so well. Okay, so I've brought it inside, chucked on the bench, put a little drill on here, made sure it actually opens and closes, which seems to be good. Seal's pushing out a little bit here, but once it's in, it's fine. Just want to disassemble it so I can unpick this old roof. Okay, I have all the sunroof stripped down now, and I'll show you that it doesn't actually open the entire way. So, what I'm going to do here is extend the base about 50mm so that it actually does open the entire way because at the moment it hasn't got enough room and then to get rid of this bulky external motor and gearbox setup I'm going to put a uni joint here and put a, a modern worm drive little motor here that has the motor and gearbox built into it so then hopefully it should still fit in the roof Okay, so under the little magic box, there's a little diff in there. So hopefully I can just put the uni joint right there on that shaft. I'll put a little flat spot on it. And it should be, should be good. Okay, so taking into account when I extend this, say, 60mm, I'll probably even end up putting the uni joint somewhere around here. I won't um, bastardise any of these gears or anything, I'll actually try and take them off properly because there's someone probably out there that actually needs one and I'll just put it away somewhere. can't imagine these would be too easy to get. Okay, got all the gears taken off it and the uni fits perfectly. Sweet. So now I just need to determine the length of it where it needs to be and I'm going to leave this bearing on there just to hold the shaft. So why not? Put a little carrier for it on the end of here just to hold it. Give that a bit more support, why not? Okay, all stripped down. Surprisingly pretty light. So they've had a strengthening plate put in here factory and it has caused a little bit of pitting. So I'll probably join on that area there. Kill two birds with one stone and get rid of the rusted areas. Instead of trying to join down here where the drains are, which aren't rusty at all, it's better to just leave those areas alone. Okay, cool. Just roughly sitting in place to double check that it does open the whole way now, and there we go. It's past the hood lining opening, so that's fine. Okay, so it's extended and just stitched in place. I probably will extend these, just like 20 mil or so, just a peace of mind that it never actually drops under and gets caught there. It creates a nightmare. That's the whole way and way past, so I have plenty of room. Happy days. 
pretty cool mechanism for 1970s technology. So for it, when it fully closes and it needs to raise the back of the sunroof up, it uses these little things, which is pretty cool. Crazy to think they could make that stuff in the 70s. Ah, dickhead. I didn't factor in the length of the worm screw. So now there's actually not enough travel to open and close it fully. So I've got to change this over. I'll probably change this as well. Idiot. Okay, so I'm going to take this past the local bolt shop to have a geese. It's only a plastic insert for the thread anyway, so it shouldn't be too hard to retrofit something to this. Just so no one gets mad, this roof's already pretty stretched and stuff from the sandblaster. So, as you can hear, not liking it, it's very stretched in most areas. Easier to see the dents and creases that are actually in it from this angle. It's pretty sad in all these areas. It's a perfect candidate to test some things. Okay, so I've got this 25 by 8 flat stock and I'm going to curve each piece individually and then weld them all together so I've got two rings to clamp together for the roof so that I can tip the sunroof lip and not do any damage to the roof hopefully. Alrighty, so I've got all of the pieces bent up, upper and lower pieces, etc. So, sit it in. fits on there nice. So now I can lay them all around the sunroof, hopefully clamp them all in place and then just infill the corners in to suit, top and bottom. So this sunroof flange is not actually just a 90 flange like most conventional sunroofs. It's got to tip around 180 like a hem and clamp onto this slip the whole way around, not just the backside like most goldies and stuff like that. This is going to be a tricky one to turn that lip 180 the entire way around without making a mess. Now I'm using these little two inch novelty clamps because I'm going to put like 14 around the perimeter so I don't really want to add too much weight pushing down on the roof. I am going to support the roof with box section under this frame once I clamp it all in place but still just trying to be precautious. Don't want to run massive clamps and add more weight than this two layers of 8 mils already going to put on the roof skin. Okay so got the perimeter just clamped on, a few TIG tacks here and there to hold it. So it should be good. Hopefully I can just weld these together now, put the bottom side on the top side, clamp those together, weld the bottoms together and then infill these corners the right radius. Upper and lowers are clamped together. You can really see the arc on this now while it's on the bench. It's definitely not a flat roof at all. Right, keen to unclamp it, weld the other sides of them and then infill all the corners for the radius. Okay, both sides are welded, so just give it a quick test on the car. Okay, fitting good. There is a dent at that back area, that's why it's low under there. But that is dented down. But other than that, fitting great. Happy with that. Okay, you've all welded up, infilled the corners and belt sanded and then used the sander just to make sure the radius is perfect. And the underside of this top one is all that really matters. It doesn't really matter about the top side, so it didn't go too crazy. Well, I hope this works. Made some incisions from the bottom and mill across from the line. Transfer it to the top, draw the radius on and cut it out. So you pretty much just want to turn the edge over. So 
So most of the edges turned over now. Use this little tool to get right in the corner. But it's tipped right over. I'm going to take the clamps off now and see how it looks. Okay, top and bottom popped off. It's all on there. The only issues I can notice is slight high spots in the two front corners. But I've got a radius set right off. Piss that off and I'll round the whole edge of the perimeter off so it doesn't dig in anywhere. Other than that, pretty strong. So how's it up? Test the sunroof in now before I tap it around. Look at that. We're ready to tip it over and lock it in. You're kidding. We're on here. So the panel fits back in, I can lift the back up flush. I can't lift the front up, it's because the edge is too long. It won't let, it won't let me come up. It's on the sunroof skin. But, it looks to fit. Alright, it's raining at the moment, so I can't shuffle some cars around, but I'd like to put my coupe where the ute is, so we can start this operation. I might strip my interior out while it's here. Just take the cage out, take the seats out, take this dash out because I'm going to get ready to put my good dash in. And I'll cut the hood lining out of it. I don't really want to take the front screen out at the moment. It keeps dust out of the car so I might just razor blade the hood lining. I don't need it anymore. Okay, so I've just nosed it forward instead of trying to get it in this spot where I'd ideally want it. It's raining at the moment and I'm waiting for cars to get picked up so I'm a bit tight for space. So this should be enough room to do what I want to do. Curious on how much of the cage can be remade in the same style. I'm pretty sure all the front section will be remade the exact same. It clears the sunroof. It should only end up around here. And the same as the sidebars, they're very tight to the roof. But the main hoop will have to be dropped down 20 mil, obviously. I've got about 20 mil to the roof skin at the moment, but it's no biggie. Okay, seats are out. Pretty much ready to rip the cage out and then tack the hood on. Okay, got the jungle gym out of there. Time to rip this hood liner off. Hood liner's out. Still see all the cavity wax pumped in everywhere after doing the rain gutters. Right, cool, just piss the sprays off now and we'll get the sunder assembly bolted up in there. Okay, just bolted in there with just the two side brackets. And you can see how good it's fitting to the roof everywhere. Just nice. Mint. Ready to mark the hole, scribe it, and cut it out. Well, hole's marked. No turning back after this point. Cut it out. Bye bye, roof. to tip the edge. Okay, so the lips turned 90, just so I can sit the sunroof frame back in there. Uh, this is a tricky one because instead of like the Goldie sunroofs that turn 180, just on the back side, this has turned 180 like a hem the entire way around that clamps the sunroof. So it's going to be a little tricky. Got a few clamps just propping the lid up. It can't come up the whole way because the lip's still turned down. It's not turned 180 yet on the perimeters. So it's sitting a little low. 
Oh, fitting good. So I got a motor mounted in there. They actually sent me the wrong motor. I asked for an 8mm shaft and they sent me a 6mm shaft. So it's too small. I knew it was going to be too small, but I thought I'd try it anyway. It's not really enjoying it. It's too slow as well, I guessed. 50 RPM for the motor. So obviously it's just going to be a trial and error thing. Figure it all out. But at least it's working. It's just now change things until it works perfectly. Okay, I've moved the screw block back 30mm and now I've got to actually extend these rails out past this opening 20mm just so it can have enough travel. It's only got enough travel for 400 at the moment but I need uh, 440 so. So as well as extending the actual base of the unit to allow this to have enough room to slide into, I had to make adjustments here and move the move the actual screw point backwards and make a little pocket for this to actually extend forwards enough and used to come to about here before. So now I've got my 50mm travel out of this as well. Just testing operations with no motor connected at the moment, but lips turned the whole way. So originally these sunroofs only go to about there and I couldn't handle leaving it like that because it would just shit me in a year's time when I'm like oh it doesn't even open the whole way I want the hood lining area to be flush so a bit of mods but worth it just goes to show you don't know what's lurking under the paint look at all these little rust patches everywhere Motor so slow, 50 RPM. I need about 400 RPM, I think. No rubbers in at the moment, just checking it all works. All back in and operational. Got no rubbers on there at the moment, so I'm going to order a rubber kit for it and then I can set all the stops and make sure it works perfectly. Pretty keen to see this car painted again one day. Not too sure on the deflector. I did roar it so that it matches the stainless on the window a little bit. I might take it off. I might just make a little hold down clip for it or paint it white. I'll see what looks the best. Personally, I like it without, but it might grow on me. We're going to restore all the hardware, like change all the screws to brand new ones and get a new rubber kit for it. I've also got a 3D print some little slides. They go on here, two of them broke. So it still works without the four of them, but it would just obviously work better when it has a four. I've just thrown the front legs of the cage and the seats back in just so I could sit there and actually see what it's like. Now I'm going to get the cage redone completely. Get a new main hoop and rear legs and stuff like that and then worry about getting a hood lining done after the car's painted again but i've ordered a rubber kit for this sunroof now then i can gap it all up perfectly make sure it's 100 percent so as well as extending the frame and all the mechanisms and rods to make it open the whole way i changed the arc in all directions and tweaked it so that it actually matches the shape of the roof perfectly it's not just some flat spotted sunroof or the roof doesn't change shapes the roof is actually the exact same roof skin exact same roof shape so a lot of stuffing around but well worth it and another thing that was a major selling point for me is the sunroof type doesn't have a massive rubber seal or a protruding rubber it actually seals underneath and that's why it's got the 180 degree lip it seals underneath so it's such such a slim little gap that they look great when they're shot so I'm a bit torn on where I'm actually going to mount the sunroof switch. I'm thinking of putting it in an interior console, 1970s specific, out of something that matches the rest of this interior. Because I'm going to put my other dash back in this car, just an untouched GX5 dash with 
the, the wood grain's getting refreshed at the moment. It's got a non-cracked dash pad, original radio and stuff like that. So I thought I want to try and match it all up. So if you know of something that's got like a uh, wood grain sort of insert or something as a roof console that I can mount a switch in that's got an interior light combo there, that'd be pretty cool if you could let me know. So an update on the Cosmo, I'm jumping on it this week coming and we're actually going on an adventure, my wife and I, tomorrow to go suss out another Cosmo that's local to us and he's got some spare parts. He's got a front lower apron, a bonnet and another boot lid. So I'm keen to see what other spares he's got to really kickstart this project and really help us out because he needs some parts that are made that I also have to make for this one and I may as well make two of them instead of just making the dies for one set can really help him out as well so keen to see those tomorrow